Welcome to Paradox Home Chemistry. In this video, chlorobenzene will be prepared from aniline via the Sandmeyer reaction. Chlorobenzene is a useful chemical in organic syntheses. It dissolves a wide range of organic compounds, making it an effective high boiling solvent. It also has numerous applications as a reagent. One method of preparing this compound is through the Sandmeyer reaction. This reaction entails the diazotization of aniline to a phenyl diazonium salt followed by the catalytic decomposition of that salt with copper 1 chloride. The main resultant product is chlorobenzene. Before we begin, a word of caution. Aniline is toxic and hydrochloric acid is corrosive. Goggles and gloves are required. Wear proper safety gear at all times and work in a well-ventilated area. Alright then, let's get started. Place a 600 milliliter beaker on a magnetic stirrer and add to it 57 milliliters of distilled water. Then add 20 milliliters of aniline. Once they are mixed, slowly add 57 milliliters of 37% hydrochloric acid to the beaker in small portions. Small amounts of white fumes will be released. Once the fumes subside, place the beaker in a salt ice bath and wait for the temperature to drop to 0 degrees Celsius or below. A white precipitate of aniline hydrochloride is observed at this low temperature. Once the mixture reaches the desired temperature, begin to add a solution of 16 grams of sodium nitrite and 33 milliliters of distilled water using an addition funnel. This forms nitrous acid in situ. Add the sodium nitrite solution dropwise to ensure that the temperature stays as low as possible. Do not let the temperature rise above 5 degrees Celsius, as the sensitive phenyl diazonium chloride would decompose. If the temperature gets too high, brown-orange nitrogen dioxide gas will be released. Keep the magnetic stir stirring and use the salt ice bath for cooling throughout the entire addition. The white precipitate of aniline hydrochloride dissolves as it reacts with the nitrous acid. Meanwhile, dissolve 27.72 grams of copper 1 chloride and 113 milliliters of 37% hydrochloric acid in a 1 liter 3 neck round bottom flask. The resulting solution is dark green to black. Place the flask in a salt ice bath on top of a magnetic stirrer. Allow the temperature to drop to 0 degrees Celsius or below. When the sodium nitrite addition is complete, allow the mixture to finish reacting for a few minutes. Use the salt ice bath to keep the temperature as low as possible. Then begin to slowly add the phenyl diazonium chloride solution to the copper 1 chloride solution in small portions. Keep the phenyl diazonium chloride cold between additions. The mixture thickens due to the separation of an addition product between the diazonium salt and the copper 1 chloride. During the addition of the diazonium salt, small amounts of brown-orange nitrogen dioxide gas are released. Once all of the diazonium salt has been added, remove the cooling bath and allow the mixture to come to room temperature without external heating. The mixture becomes less viscous as it warms up. During this step, nitrogen dioxide gas is released, so it is necessary to do this outside or under a fume hood. Once the mixture reaches room temperature, a hot water bath is applied to slowly bring the reaction up to 60 degrees Celsius. As the mixture warms up, effervescence is observed as nitrogen gas is released. The release of nitrogen gas continues for several minutes. Once no more nitrogen is evolved, set up for steam distillation using the following or similar apparatus. The leftmost flask contains distilled water that is boiled to generate steam. The steam travels up the tube and bubbles through the reaction mixture. The resulting steam slash vapor mixture is condensed in the condenser and the distillate is stored in the rightmost flask. It is important to note that the reaction flask must be heated, otherwise the steam will simply condense upon contact with the cooler reaction mixture. As the distillation commences, drops of yellow oil will appear in the distillate. This oil is the crude chlorobenzene. Continue the distillation until no more oily drops are present in the distillate. The distillate was given time to form two layers. Then it was transferred to a separatory funnel and the layers were separated. Discard the upper aqueous layer and keep the lower chlorobenzene layer. Transfer the chlorobenzene back to the separatory funnel and wash it twice consecutively with solutions of 2.5 grams of sodium hydroxide in 25 milliliters of water. The sodium hydroxide solution helps to remove phenol and other side products. Wash the chlorobenzene one more time with 30 milliliters of distilled water. 
Transfer the chlorobenzene to a 50 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask and add enough anhydrous calcium chloride until the desiccant is free flowing without clumps. This removes any traces of water from the chlorobenzene. Place the flask on a magnetic stirrer and stir it for about 30 minutes to complete the drying process. Decant the chlorobenzene into a 100 milliliter round bottom flask. Rinse the Erlenmeyer flask in calcium chloride with a total of 35 milliliters of dry dichloromethane in small portions. Add all of the dichloromethane rinses to the 100 milliliter round bottom flask. Rinsing with dichloromethane ensures that none of the chlorobenzene is lost on the desiccant. Set it for simple distillation and distill off all but about 1 milliliter of liquid. The distillate is a colorless mixture of dichloromethane and chlorobenzene. The distillate, contained in a 125 milliliter round bottom flask, is placed on a hot plate set to very low heat. The goal is not to boil the solution, it is to only provide enough heat to aid in evaporation. Continue to gently heat the mixture until it stops losing mass. This indicates that all dichloromethane has evaporated. Once all the dichloromethane has been evaporated, transfer the pure colorless chlorobenzene to a suitable bottle for storage. Here is the final product. 9.98 grams, roughly 9 milliliters of pure chlorobenzene were collected. This corresponds to a 40% yield based on aniline. That was chlorobenzene from aniline via the Sandmeyer reaction. Thanks for watching, and see you next time on Paradox Home Chemistry.